Now, much of the beautiful scenery we enjoy here in the southwest has been created by our rivers as they carve out a route to the sea. Well, I've been exploring one of those rivers, the Dart, in South Devon. In the second leg of my journey, I travelled from the Sharpham Estate down the river to the village of Dittisham, or Ditsum as it's pronounced by locals, to find out why a particular fruit grows in abundance there. Well, Ditsum is one of the many pretty villages on the banks of the Dart, and wherever you go, there are signs of plums, lots of plum trees in the village. And here in the village hall, there's a plaque in honour of the plum with a poem that reads, The wasps patrol the orchard as the hours fall like plums into the unkempt grass. From the fruit's warm skin, the slow juice runs like honey trickling through an hourglass. But why is the plum so big in Ditsum? We're going to go and find out. Well, well Ian, we're in this beautiful spot overlooking the dart, surrounded by plum trees, but how did Ditsum become famous for plum trees? Well, it's, uh, it's a bit of a, well, there's lots of stories. Most of them is pure myth, I have to say. <laughs> um, they, they, they probably came from somewhere like Germany because they are very similar to a, a variety that grows in Germany. They, they've probably been here for, what, 100 years, 200 years? Nobody really knows, they, but they just arrived um, from a ship, no doubt, it, either in the form of a, a, a of trees or, or prunes or whatever, but uh, it's generally thought that it was a wreck. And uh, the, there's one little story about the, the ship was wrecked in the sea and uh, after it sunk to the bottom, up came a, a box and it was all full of, of, of prunes or plum stones or trees or whatever. And uh, somehow they came up the dart and ended up here. Nobody knows. <laughs> it's a nice story though, isn't it? <laughs> it is a nice story, yes it is. Today, the plums are being harvested by drinks company Bramley & Gage. Hello, Michael. If I could just, just uh, interrupt you there while you're picking the fruit. What happens to this harvest once you've, you've collected it? What do you do with it? The process is called maceration. It's the same process that the French use for creme de cassis or creme de mûre. And we just we do a plum liqueur, dish and plum liqueur, uh, uh, filter it and bottle it. The harvest hasn't been quite so good this year, though, has it, unfortunately, because of the weather? Well, no, the weather's not been great. Um, but some years it's a fantastic harvest and the boughs of the trees hanging right down near the ground, easy to pick, which is obviously uh, <laughs> a boon. Um, but we try and pick every year. Um, it, the years, the flavour between each year is very similar, so there's no, there's no problem with consistency on that front. They look like little jewels. They, they almost glow, don't they? On They're the, beautiful. You the just tree. see the, uh, the lovely, lovely flesh. That's a lovely bit of fruit you've got there. Yeah. You see as your fingers leave a mark on the surface. Yeah. It's just like a slow, Devon slow is very similar with that kind of dusting on top. Mm. That looks like a good one. Very good. What I don't want you to film is me falling off the ladder. Though. Well, after all that harvesting, it's time now to sit back and enjoy the fruits of our labours. Thank you very much, gentlemen. Yeah, cheers. Cheers. Thank you. cheers. 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 Mm. Yummy. That is very good. Very it's nice. nice. Yeah. And what a perfect setting it was <laughs> as well. And tomorrow, in the final part of my journey, I'll be finding out how the Dartmouth Harbour Master and his team prepare for the regatta, which takes place this week. Very nice, that plum liqueur, wasn't it? I did bring you back some. Very you? nice. Only a small tipple. <laughs>